going guys and welcome to Form Our Ranch. So if you clicked on this video, you probably have a pretty good idea of what's in store. I for one am extremely excited to be taking a look at this for you guys. We have a Thor 4 Smart HD Thermal Rifle Scope. This one in particular is actually a 4.5 to 18 power using a 384 by 288 sensor. Guys, before we get started, go ahead and do me a favor. Take a look at the description below. There's gonna be a lot of details in there, as well as I'm gonna go ahead and put a timeline of the different things we're gonna cover in this video. So if there's something that you're after and you wanna to get to right away, you don't necessarily have to watch the whole video. Feel free to skip around and get those details that you're really after. I'm also gonna have a link of where you can purchase this for yourself if you decide you wanna go ahead and make the plunge and get into the thermal optic game after watching this video. So as always, the first thing I like to do on these in-depth videos is to open it up and show you guys exactly what to expect inside the box as you receive it, should you decide to invest your own money on this awesome piece of gear. So you obviously have the optic itself. That's kind of a no-brainer. You can see it's clearly marked Thor 4. And on the other side, the sensor size is also clearly visible as well. More on this guy to come. You get a nice neoprene case for it, which can cover the optic when it's mounted onto a firearm. And then you have a pouch inside, and that pouch is pretty useful for the next item. And that is your charger. Now this charger is a nice heavy braided charger. One thing that I really like is that it has a 90 degree elbow, so when it's plugged into the side of the optic, it kind of reduces that stress concentration where your charger can potentially give out if it's snagged or bumped against something. So a nice touch there as well. And like I mentioned, you're actually able to store your charger inside of the case to keep everything all nice and together like that. You have a rear eyepiece that'll not only kind of keep light from escaping out and giving away your potential hunting position, but it'll also make it a little easier to see the screen in the daylight. Not one, not two, but three scope rings. So you have two vertical rings, that's pretty obvious, but you also have an offset. So if you want to take the top off of one of these other rings and throw it on this guy, it kind of gives you that extra versatility and this is very much appreciated. I'm really glad ATN decided to do this. It's one less thing you got to worry about buying aftermarket when you've already invested a fair amount of money in the optic and it just really makes it ready to go out of the box. An included microfiber cleaning cloth, the needed Allen wrench for your scope rings, and of course your manual letting you know all the ins and outs of your optic because as we're gonna get into a little bit in this video guys, there are many, many features associated with this thing. Now naturally the first thing I wanted to do when I pulled it out of the box was look around at my surroundings and I gotta say guys, it is really cool the first time looking through this. So I used my dog as a quick model in my backyard and here's some of that initial footage. It's really interesting to see everything just based off temperature. You can clearly distinguish the hot spots from the cold spots and here while he's chewing on the stick you can even see where his saliva and breath temporarily warm up the stick. So it's a very sensitive sensor and I was highly impressed. All right guys, so we have this optic mounted up on top of our rifle of choice for this review. And as you can see for right away, I do have the L-shaped scope ring. And this kind of paints a picture of why that can be extremely useful that ATN included that. So there isn't really rail space above the charging handle on AR-15s, which is what a lot of guys are using for hog hunting. So having that L-shaped ring really helps you to get that proper eye relief that's comfortable for the shooter. But anyways, guys, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and start diving into things. And first things first is to get into a little bit of specs overview of this optic. And then I'll show you some of the layout of the buttons and external functionalities of the scope so that you're kind of oriented on what you're looking at for the remainder of the review. So this thing sits at a little bit over a foot at 13.8 inches long. And although it looks big guys, it only weighs 2.2 pounds. So this is barely noticeable as is on top of your rifle and weighs roughly in the ballpark of a normal rifle scope. Now keep in mind all of the features that are packed into this and it's really worth its weight in gold guys, but it's pretty amazing that it comes in at only 2.2 pounds. Now the eye relief is 30 millimeters which converts to a little bit under one and a quarter inch but I have not noticed any kind of discomfort with the eye relief. It feels about just right for shooting off of this kind of platform. Now the thermal sensitivity of this thing is phenomenal. You can actually see a handprint if you touch a wall when you're at close range and it was able to detect living things at over a thousand yards away. So both at close range and far range, this thing was pretty impressive. And I'll be sure to show you guys some of that footage as well. 
It does allow you to record HD photos and videos, which is really neat and one of my favorite perks of this optic. So you can record any of your shooting or hunting so you can show your friends and family for a little bit of bragging rights on your hunt. It has a number of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth features, which again, we're definitely gonna cover some of those, so make sure you stick around or skip around to the ones you're really interested in. Now that we've covered some of what this scope can do, let's talk about how you kind of operate the scope. So you'll notice at the objective lens, you actually have this ring that can rotate. What this will allow you to do is to focus the image that the scope is perceiving. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the eyepiece rotates, and this kind of focuses the image to the shooter's eye. So I know everyone's eyesight is a little different. This will focus what the scope is recording to your particular eye, where the front is just kind of adjusting the clarity of the image coming in, depending on the range that you're at. You'll notice this knob on the left-hand side. You'll zoom in by going counterclockwise, and you can zoom out by going clockwise. There's a little bit of tactile feel, almost like there's some gears in there, so you're not just rotating this thing endlessly, you kind of do feel it, although it never bottoms out any direction. You can rotate this all day long, and when you reach the maximum zoom or the minimum zoom, it'll stop. Now on the top of the scope, you got some buttons as well. To so turn it on, you'll hold the power button down for a couple seconds, you'll both hear and feel a little click go on inside of the unit itself. Now once it's on, you press the OK button to navigate through the menu the settings and all the options and features of the scope. And when you are in that menu setting, all these buttons surrounding the OK button essentially turns into kind of a control pad. So you can go up with the power button, down with this, right and left, and then you hit OK to select things and navigate through the menu that way. Now when you're out of the menu, this button is essentially a hotkey to get you to the rangefinder feature, which again we'll be talking about later in the video. The power button will get you an instant nuke right there, which stands for non-uniformity correction. Now what this essentially does is if you have a different kind of temperature gradient or you're going from one environment to the next looking in a different area where temperatures vary, you'll pretty much just tap this button like that and you'll see it through the scope. It takes about a half a second to a second and it essentially calibrates for the temperature gradient of the area you're aiming at to make sure you get the sharpest image possible. I will say this is a bit of a learning curve. If you're not used to thermal, you need to make sure you're doing this every so often to ensure you're getting the most out of the scope because it is a very clear picture, assuming that you perform a recent nuke and you haven't changed the temperature field on you too much. There is a feature for auto nuking this and we'll kind of talk about that in the menus later as well. Now to power the device off, you'll just hold down the power button. It'll prompt you inside the scope. If you want to turn the device off, you'll scroll over and hit OK and the device will shut down and that's it. Now if we take a look at the left hand side guys, you'll notice that there's two rubber ports. The one in the back opens up and this is where you plug in to charge. Now this will let you charge right off the wall or you can hook this scope into an external battery pack if you think 18 hours isn't going to be long enough for you or you don't want to charge it that often. Or let's say something happens and you just totally forget to charge it, you can hook up to an external battery pack when you're going out on a hunt. And the one in the front has a little SD card on it and that is for your SD slot. So this is compatible with a micro SD card, anywhere from a 4 to 64 gigabyte card, and that's where you're going to store any of the pictures or photos that you capture on this optic. It just pops right in, and then you cover it up with the rubber cover to help with some of that weather resistance right there. Alrighty guys, so now that we have the basic overview down of this optic right out of the box, we'll go ahead and start diving into some of those features and setting this optic up for yourself. Now obviously guys, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you unbox something really cool like this is to throw it on your rifle, take it to the range, take it hunting, what have you. But there's one step that's extremely important that you want to make sure you do not skip and that is making sure that you have the most current version of firmware for your optic because it is a smart optic, it does run on software, so make sure you're getting the most out of that. So step one should really be making sure that this optic is updated. Now all you got to do, it's real quick, you simply power your optic on, you can see in the settings menu what firmware version you're currently running. You can go on their website, see what the latest firmware is, and if there is an update, you just download that onto an SD card and you pop it into your optic. As soon as you power your optic on, it recognizes that there's a newer firmware on that SD card and it'll ask you if you'd like to update the optic. So just select yes and go ahead and update it and you're done. It's that simple and now you have an updated optic ready to go. So obviously then the next step is getting this thing mounted and zeroed. So first things first, we're going to talk about the zeroing of this optic. And honestly, this is my favorite feature with ATN's latest lineup, and that's their one-shot zero. It's where you essentially take a shot and then you drag some crosshairs onto where that impact was, 
and it will zero the optic. You'll save your settings and it's that simple, guys. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this is done through the optic itself. You'll hit the OK to pop up your menu and you'll scroll over to the zero reticle option. Now you can also go through some other settings for a more roundabout way to achieve the ability to zero your reticle, but I definitely recommend going this way. Now let's say we were aiming at the bullseye and we hit in the top left diamond of this target. All you would simply do is scroll the red crosshairs onto where the round actually impacted while holding the white crosshairs at the bullseye. I understand I'm a little off guys, bear with me because I am doing this through a camera. When you're happy with where you're at, you can go ahead and hit OK and opt to save and exit or you can discard your changes if you want to go ahead and tweak it some more. And that's it guys. Now as far as targets go, there's a couple things that I recommend after messing around with a few. So I've seen a lot of people use hand warmers. Hand warmers are obviously great, but that's not something you may always have with you. Typically, if you're going to the range, you have some kind of paper target. Now this one, all I did was color in the center with some Sharpie. Since it's black, it absorbs a little bit more of that sunlight than the rest of the paper and it just heats up a little more. You can actually distinguish that fairly well through the thermoscope. Another option is just using some electrical tape. And so again, electrical tape colored in that just to verify that they look the same and they really do appear the same. Now here's some footage downrange of that target I just showed you so you can see how well that electrical tape shows up. You can easily tell what you're aiming at and it will really help you expedite the zeroing process. And here's a picture taken through the scope for additional reference. And now I'm going to show you some footage at 100 yards but the audio is going to be out of the scope to give you an idea of that as well. Make sure everything's in focus. So obviously it gets a little bit grainy because it is digital, but you can still tell what you're shooting at. And this is where that electrical tape comes in very handy because you can tell exactly where you should hold level. Now for good measure, I went ahead and grabbed a variety of targets so you guys could see what it'll look like through the optics. So on the left, we have an ice cold water bottle. Then I have a simple steel plate. Now keep in mind, this is sitting in the sun. And then I have a paper target. And again, for reference, I went ahead and put electrical tape, but you'll notice on the top left and top right are some foot warmers in there that I had laying around. So you guys get an idea of what those will look like. Cause that is, like I said, a common method for a lot of guys with thermal optics. And then finally, I have a another water bottle. And here's a look at what that looks like downrange. So you can see obviously the extreme colds are very black and the hots are white because I'm right now in white hot. We'll get into detail with the color settings a little further later in this video. But again, just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. So you can see from greatest to least, the extreme ends of temperature obviously stick out the most and that steel plate doesn't stick out a whole lot, although it is still visible. Now, just like the previous range footage, this shot was filmed during the day and it was a very hot 90 degree day in South Texas. And you can see that the cows still jump out at you from the surrounding foliage with no problems whatsoever. Here we have cows at night. They're approximately 120 yards away behind the feeder as I'm waiting for hogs to show up. And you can clearly distinguish the feeder itself. The most impressive thing is to scan a field like this and anything that's a living within it immediately glows out at you. Even these small jackrabbits pop out and this field is pretty large. The tree line in the distance is up to 400 yards away at some of the angles shown here. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through the menu itself. So like I said, you press the OK button and this is what you're going to see. The menu itself is going to pop up and we'll go ahead and scroll from left to right and then I'll cover one of my favorite features because there's just not enough time to cover it all in this video. So here is the nuke function. Again, you can just click that and you see that the scope essentially did a calibration. You also have a hotkey. So I press the power button right there. You see it kind of flash for a second. I know I'm not looking at anything right now, guys. Didn't want any distractions while going through the menu. So that's the nuke function. Here's your range finder. I'm gonna to touch on that more in just a second. Here's the advanced shortcuts. So if I click that, you'll see it crosses it out and it only gives you the bare essentials in the menu. But we're gonna go ahead and cover everything else. So you have a distance entry. If you click on that with that left knob, you just scroll forward or back. So that's why in some of the footage in this video, there's arbitrary numbers because this can get kind of adjusted at times. So I usually just leave it at 100 or so and just kind of forget about it to be honest with you guys. Now where that's more important, we'll cover later. Here's your environment. So you can enter any kind of conditions that you may be up against. 
and I'll talk about that more in just a second along with that distance entry. You have a gallery where you can view things. You have Wi-Fi, which is how you can connect to the mobile app. Now, while we're on the subject of the app, let's go ahead and take a quick look at that as well. The first thing you want to do is make sure the Wi-Fi feature is turned on on your optic. Next, you'll want to connect your mobile device to that optics Wi-Fi. When you do so and you pull up the app, this is what you'll see. You'll hit connect your device and then you'll see the option for your optic that you have in particular. The first thing that comes up is the system menu, and that's essentially all your settings that you can adjust from the mobile app so that you don't have to go through the optic itself. It's fairly convenient to use, and you can make some quick adjustments on the fly. Next is the environment tab where you can enter additional information about your environment, and we will again be covering this later in some of the features that we'll be discussing. There's a profiles and zero tab where you can select from a number of saved profiles if you want to switch the optic from a different firearm to another or even switch ammunition types. Up next is the reticle style tab. So this is actually being recorded through my mobile app and you can change the color of your reticle real time to find what suits your eyesight best. Not only can you change the color, but there's a number of styles that you can pick from to again, find the one that match your needs the best. Now, moving past the reticle style tab, you'll find the viewfinder option. Now, this is one of my favorite tools as well because it allows you to have a live feed from your optic to a mobile device. Where this comes in extremely handy is if you have someone that you're shooting or hunting with, you're able to give them insights and feedback on what they're doing, how they're performing, or possibly able to see animals that they're spotting. This is a very, very useful tool. And as you can see, there's almost no lag between what the optic sees and what the app sees. And finally, there's the gallery where you can view any of the photos or videos you've recorded to the optic. Here's recoil activated video. If you engage that, you can set basically a time before it detects the recoil of a gunshot to where let's say it's 15 seconds before it detects a gunshot, you'll have that 15 seconds prior and it'll record a set amount after the gunshot itself. That's totally up to you. It is nice to not have to remember to record before a hunt, but you really gotta make sure if you're using a smaller caliber that there's gonna be enough oomph for the scope to detect it. Now, the next feature is a very cool one. That's the ballistic calculator. Now that's where that distance entry and those environmental conditions come into play. So if you activate this and you set a distance, whether manually or you use the rangefinder function, which I'm getting ready to cover here in a second, it will actually calculate your drop for you, which is really, really cool, but you gotta know your stuff. You gotta know your numbers. This will only perform as well as you allow it based on the information that you plug into it. Here's the shortcut to zero your reticle. This is where you adjust your contrast. And then the last one is your system settings where you can get really into the nitty gritty. Now we have your thermal settings. You can again adjust your contrast. Your thermal sensitivity is on a scale of one to five. I leave mine in the middle for now. It seems to be working well. Scroll down to metering mode. You can either be in matrix, which is taking all the pixels or you can just go in the center. I prefer to leave it on matrix. Here's where you can set to auto nuke. I have mine off because I remember more often than not to go ahead and just tap that power button. I really don't want it flashing when I'm not intending it to, but that is up to you. And then you have your color palettes you can choose from and there's quite a few. You have white hot, which is the one I like to stay in primarily. I feel like it gives pretty good contrast and you can see detail to not only your surroundings, but what you're looking at. Black hot is just the opposite of that. There's red hot. Everything that is warm will obviously glow red. Pretty self-explanatory there. Green hot is another option. Fusion. Globo. Iron Bow, Rainbow, and finally Rain is the last option you can opt to select.
and then you have pixel correction. So if you click this, you can do an auto correction and it'll basically refresh any dormant pixels. So this will pop up. I don't recommend doing this while you're waiting for animals because it does take a minute or so, but it will basically refresh anything. If you have any unlit or pixels that are staying lit up, it'll fix that for you. And then finally, we made it all the way back around to exit. So you just click that and then you exit out of the menu. Now let's go ahead and cover that rangefinder feature that I talked about. So you just pop it up, you go over to rangefinder, and let's take a look. Remember, you do have a hot key to this function as well. So you can see there's a variety of preset target sizes. You can also enter your own target size, which I've done for now at 0.83 feet, which is 10 inches. The reason for doing so is that my target down range is 10 inches. By placing a cursor above the target and below the target, the scope is actually checking the angle that I had to change in order to achieve that known size. And in the top left, it indicated 36.2 yards. And as you can see, when verifying through my laser rangefinder, it says 36.3 yards and that is extremely close guys that's pretty darn impressive so some of the most common feedback that i get pertaining to the newest generation of atn optics is that of the battery so a lot of people leave comments asking about battery life asking about what happens if the battery goes bad and i have some answers for that guys so this has an 18 hour battery and so far honestly guys so good it has been phenomenal I charge it up periodically and honestly, even when I'm out there for a five or six hour hunt, I barely notice that battery indicator draining, which is phenomenal guys. So it's, whenever you're using an electric optic, battery life is obviously critical. You do not want to feel like you're on a constant time clock while waiting for animals to appear. It's just not some stress that you want added to your hunt. And on that note, guys, they also made the batteries internal. So you just plug into the optic and you charge it. There's no need to swap things. The previous generation used batteries such as double A's that would just plug in. There's four of them and they would drain really, really fast. And you had to deal with having extra batteries or extra rechargeables. Now it's all in one unit, guys. So now the other side of that coin obviously is, okay, we got an internal battery inside this optic what happens if the battery goes out and you know that's a fair concern because we all use our cell phones for the most part everyone's got one nowadays and you charge it one to two times maybe even three times a day so that's a lot of drain on that battery guys so a lot of people they recognize that their cell phone batteries stop working after about two or three years they're really just no good and that's true every time you charge a battery there's a little bit less that you can put back into it that's just the physics of how batteries work However, the ATN batteries have a warranty of six years, and after that, ATN is going to offer replacement of those batteries for a very low cost to the user. Obviously, they're nowhere near that six year mark, so they haven't really figured out the logistics just yet and the exact cost, but that is something they're planning on doing, which makes me, as a user myself, a lot more comfortable. So, this could potentially be a lifetime optic if you can continue swapping that battery out years and years to come. But again, guys, keep in mind, you're not using this nearly as much as your cell phone battery, unless you are just fortunate enough to be able to go hunting all day, every day, and have to charge this thing, you know, twice a day, which again, with an 18 hour battery life, you wouldn't even be able to do. This battery is gonna last you a very long time, guys. And just in case it doesn't, there is an option down the road to get that swapped out, which is awesome thinking on ATN's part. All right, so overall, my thoughts on this optic, guys. Battery life is probably my biggest concern when I'm dealing with an electric optic. You obviously want the optic to run when you turn it on and you don't want to have to worry about it turning off during use. That's kind of a no brainer. This thing definitely exceeds my expectations on battery life. Even with a thermal sensor in it guys, it seems like it's nearly impossible to drain this thing unless you accidentally leave it on for a couple days and then yeah, you'll go back to it and the optic will be dead. That did happen to me one time during testing. I plugged it in for a couple hours and it seemed like the battery was a little bit above the halfway mark at that point and I took it out for about a four hour hunt and didn't kill the battery, which is awesome guys. So even with user negligence, it's kind of hard to run out of battery power as long as you keep in mind before taking it out that you need to throw it on a charger for a little bit. It's good to go there. Durability wise, it's been kind of thrown in my truck, driven around on the ranch. It doesn't seem like anything's coming apart. It doesn't seem like it's cheaply made by any means. It should, you know, withstand the test of time based on how I've kind of treated it so far and how it's been holding up. Uh, no issues whatsoever. It's retained at zero very well. When I mounted it, I did make sure to put these mounts on nice and solid. I put a little bit of blue Loctite on there so there's zero shift on the mount itself and the scope 
and the internals seem to hold zero very, very well. I've checked it a couple times and it has not shifted hardly anything past what could be considered my own personal human error. But of course, there's no such thing as perfect, right? So there are a couple things that I want to talk about that I kind of dislike that I was really hoping to see improved on this optic compared to the 4K Pro, but obviously this housing is pretty much exactly the same of that of the 4K Pro. So my really only complaint is on this side of the rifle, you've got your SD card port and then you have your charging port. These things are the only thing on this optic that I can really honestly complain about. Now, in all fairness, ATN definitely wanted to make these easily accessible. In previous generations, they had some stuff that you had to screw off to be able to access the battery port and, and it was a little bit harder to get to. Now it's just these rubber plugs, they simply pop on and off. That's kind of the problem. Sometimes they pop open when you don't want it to pop open. It kind of gives me a little bit of a concern about different kind of, you know, environmental elements getting in there, whether dirt or moisture. And I've actually had one of these fall off completely on me from, I guess, snagging it while getting out of the truck and hunting. Luckily, I was able to recover it and it's not hard to put back in. Just kind of popped it in with a pair of tweezers and it's good to go. But it's definitely something that down the road, I would hope to see improved in terms of durability. You know, you just don't want little things that kind of hang around and snag for something that's intended for outdoor use. Other than that, guys, that's really the only thing that I can think of that I've had anything that I could justify complaining about. Everything else has performed as it should. Honestly, guys, I, I cannot come up with anything that I don't like about this optic. All right, guys, so overall, this optic is pretty phenomenal. The amount of features that are packed into it and the weight and size that it is, is pretty amazing. It's a very, very ingenious piece of technology and it's definitely a game changer for your hunt. I was blown away by how far away I could detect heat signatures and there's definitely activity that I would have missed would I not had the thermal capabilities of this optic. So if you're looking for any kind of activity during the day or night, guys, this thing will do it for you. It'll spot those things out so fast, guys. It's amazing how much stuff you may not have noticed before getting into the thermal game. And what's even better is it'll record whatever you spotted or whatever you were hunting for so that you can share it with your friends or family or just post it on YouTube like I like to do, guys. As always, guys, I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video and stopping by the Four Mile Ranch YouTube channel and have a good one.